Hey guys, Schemey here. I've gotten a month off doing these videos. Before, it was like back-to-back -back birthdays, like a 20-day span between each, and it killed me. This time I still got it done within 10 days, but it was still nice to have a month-long break. This video is for my grandmother. I'm just gonna call her Nana the rest of the video. This is my grandmother on my dad's side, and you guys may or may not have an idea about her depending on what I said in the dad video. I think he takes after her quite a bit, especially with reading and stuff. Nana once told me the story of how this teacher told her when my dad was little that he was reading things but not comprehending them. And then my dad proceeded to lead a tour group at a museum talking about what he's read and learned at the same age, proving the teacher wrong. Nana's a super sweet person, especially to her grandchildren. I can't really imagine her being angry because I've never witnessed it. I remember when me, her, and my parents went to an open house night at a high school when I was graduating middle school. It was a magnet high school or something, and kind of a high up one at that. Nana also had some sort of vendetta against this school because of something that happened to one of her family members. As we were leaving the parking lot, my mom complained that she was the only one asking any questions. Nana pipes up and says, Yeah, I have a question. Is this school still filled with <laughs> If I was drinking a drink, I would have spat it out because that's probably the first vivid memory I have of her cussing. Although apparently because of her, a, a few of my first words were God damn it because she found out Dumbledore died in Harry Potter and said it near me. Apparently I repeated it and my parents automatically looked at her. I don't remember it, but I imagine her just saying, oh, that was me, wasn't it? I have two funny stories about the last few times she stayed with us. When she stays with us, we set up a bed for her in my room. I believe one of the first times she visited was when I had a bunk bed. The bottom of the bunk bed was too low for her to get up from because she has bad knees, so we set up a bed next to it. This time, too, I had Prosper's cage in my room. She basically had this hutch, and then a large wooden box around the hutch with flimsy four-foot walls surrounding it so she would have more space to move around in. There were many reasons why we got rid of this, one of them being what I'm about to say. I remember waking up one morning to snoring and then the sound of an animal frantically trying to escape something. I looked down to see Nana as the one snoring, and Prosper desperately trying to scrabble over the walls of her enclosure, scared for her life, only to fall back down to the ground of her cage. I hopped out of my bed while also laughing because I'm a great rabbit owner, to make sure she was okay. She just looked really angry. And that's normal for her, so I knew she was okay. And Nana just woke up at that point like, oh, good morning. I think Prosper got scared by her snoring and tried escaping. The other story I have related to this is the time Nana started singing in her sleep at like two o'clock in the morning. My bed was on the ground this time, so I sit up and look at her. Her eyes are closed, but she's holding her phone, has a pair of earbuds in, and is singing along to, I think, Kelly Clarkson. I just sat there and looked at her very tired, like, do I say something or... So I lay back down, and after another song or so, she stops. Either that or I fell asleep again. I asked her the next morning, why were you singing last night? That's when I knew she was sleep singing for sure, because she said, I was what? Anyway, Nana, if you're watching this, I love you, and I hope you had a great birthday. You deserve it. And to you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!